Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Sudbury, Massachusetts, as Ashland Post 77 takes on Sudbury Post 191. Ashland is 2 and 0 on this season, hoping to keep that undefeated record alive. But today they will have to deal with a tough Sudbury team. It is an 80 degree day here at the Lincoln Sudbury baseball field. Perfect weather for baseball. As our first hitter of the day, Ben Thomas, is set to step in to face Will Fletcher. We'll take you through the post 77 lineup in just a moment. As here is Ben Thomas stepping in to the batter's box. And we are ready for Ashland Legion Baseball on WACA TV in Ashland and H Camp Television in Hopkinton. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad on the call today as there is strike one to Ben Thomas, the right fielder. Ben Thomas, the right fielder, starting things off. Tom Cavanaugh, the pitcher, batting second. Jackson Horning, the shortstop, hitting third as there's another called strike. Brad Seymour, the center fielder, hitting fourth. Louis Rossi, the third baseman, hitting fifth. Zach Peston, the first baseman, hitting sixth. Sean Jouet, the catcher, batting seventh. Wind up and the pitch, fouled away up the left side. Sean Peston, the left fielder, batting eighth. And Cole Glassburn, the second baseman, hitting ninth. As I welcome in my broadcast partner, Larry Sacklada, tell us about that post-191 defense. I will have this next pitch, Tom. Wind up and the pitch. There is strike three, he's gonna take off. That one got away, he should reach first base, and he does. A man aboard for post 77. At third base, it's Luca Schwally, shortstop Ken Bateman, number two, playing second base, Charlie Desmarius. First base, Kyle Hankey, left to right, Josh Schreiber, Henry Stoll, Kenneth Sullivan, pitching for Lincoln Sudbury is Will Fletcher and doing the catching. For Will is Jacob Noyce. As Dom Cavanaugh, the pitcher for today, steps in, runner on first. There's a strike. Shows pretty good velocity right out of the gate. And Ben Thomas is blessed with really, really good speed as we saw during his high school um, year with Holliston. Head coach for Ashland Post 77 is coach Derek Johnson in his third season as that's fouled away into the street. And for Sudbury Post 191, it is Al Fordani in his first season at the helm for Sudbury. Oh, there's some squirrel action over there where that foul ball went. But Ben Thomas, uh, good base dealer, likes to slide in head first, likes to get his uniform dirty. Sudbury, they had a couple of big wins to start off the season as well. And they are expected to do big things as always as that pitch is just outside. Sudbury's carrying a little smaller lineup than I thought. Yeah, only 13 players on that Sudbury roster. Runner leading a bit off of first. Fletcher is set to deal. Runner's taking off. This is up the middle. Glove by the shortstop, and he drops the ball. Everybody's going to be safe. Second error of the game for Sudbury. Now, was that a bobble, or was he trying to flip it? I believe that was a bobble. It appeared he was just trying to step on the bag and lost the ball, and it just straight out fell out of his hand. Yeah, once you pick up your head on a ground ball and not read the hop properly, it's pretty much doomsday for you. So here is Jackson Horning from Ashland High School. As this is going to get by the catcher, both runners move up on the wild pitch. Rough start for Sudbury. Jackson had a tremendous year at Ashland High this year. Um, Got to believe he was in the, a TVL All-Star. Would be a bit surprised. He's four for eight for the first two games of the Legion season. Good all-around player. He can run, he can hit, he can throw, he can play really good defense at shortstop, which you'll see all season. He's driven in four runs, scored two as he takes that one low. One and two count. Fletcher working out of the stretch with Thomas on third base. Horn calls time. Fletcher is set to deal. He struck out the first hitter, but then Ben Thomas able to reach on the error by the catcher. 
As the baseball got by him, as that pitch is inside, a little chin music there. Oh, absolutely. No, nothing intentional, though. I think Jackson's going to play some AAU ball in addition to Legion ball this summer. Some colleges sniff it around at him. The righty steps back in. Up the left side, past the dive of the third baseman. Here is one run, and the runner behind him held up at third. It's an RBI single for Horning. It's going to be trouble for those center fielder, for the center fielders from both sides and the left fielders from both sides. The sun is right in their eyes. Right fielder, no problem. Ben Thomas comes around to score. Dom Cavanaugh up to third. Hornung over at first, and to the plate, it's Brad Seymour, the center fielder. Sort of a pest. He certainly is. Po 77 with some nice new jerseys this season. As there's a strike runner from first taken off the throw up is a good one, but it is going to get away. Now the runner from third is going to score. It's 2 0 Po 77. Dom Cavanaugh comes around, and the throw up was pretty good by Jacob Noyes, the catcher, but that just went right off of Hornung. Well, I'm surprised they didn't have. Kavanaugh running as soon as that ball went through, but that's that's uh, coach's coach's call over there. Well, we know Coach Johnson is pretty aggressive when it comes to base running. He's going to send his runners a lot to go. That pitch outside. One and one count on Seymour. Fred Somebody's working the scoreboard. Fred Seymour. <laughs> Two for five so far in the young Legion season. And he's got speed. He certainly does. He's an excellent center fielder, too. He'll, he'll play a lot this year. He's a returning member of post 77. As this is up the middle, off the pitcher's glove. And he is going to be aboard safely at first base, Horning up to third. Fletcher's not getting any any breaks this inning. He certainly isn't. No outs so far in the inning as Lewis Rossi will step in, the third baseman. And he is the biggest pest on this squad, if you recall from last year. Had his battles with Coach Johnson about his fielding at third. And then he was sort of the hero there was his bunting ability. Likes to bunt down the third baseline, slap the ball. Here comes the uh, Lincoln Sudbury coach for a little chat with Fletcher. Yeah, Cordani gonna try to settle his pitcher down. Certainly a rough way to start. You get a strikeout, but then the hitter reaches first anyway on an error by the catcher and then another error by the shortstop. That should have been two outs right there. And the rally just continuing on, four post 77. Runners on the corners, no outs. You can see the left fielder with not even ball in play trying to shade his eyes out there. Like I mentioned, it's like air conditioning out in right field. Yeah, I don't know how they're going to see that ball out there in left field. The sun is just beating right down. Well, you can go out there for him. That's okay. I'll stay right here. <laughs> nice and cool where you are. As Lewis Rossi steps back in. Is he going to show bunt here? What do you think? That's possible. He's going to swing away. There's a strike. Noise popped up like he was going to throw out a runner. And Seymour, who's probably likely to go here. Runner taking off from first, bunt pulled back, and the throw up is cut off by the pitcher. Stolen base for Seymour, two runners in scoring position. I have a direct connection to the coach through my earpiece. I earpace. think you do. So that's how I can predict the steals. I think you have them mic'd up and you're not telling us. Uh, One and two count now. Talk about it later. Two men in scoring position for Lincoln Sudbury. It's a good spot for Lewis Rossi. Fletcher deals. Oh, I thought he was going to get sent back to the dugout. It was a very close pitch. I thought so, too. Two and two.
Wind up and the pitch. Inside, full count. Still nobody out for Lincoln Sudbury. Wind up in the pitch. There it is. This is up the middle, past the dive of the third baseman. Here is one run into score, and that is all that'll score as the ball quickly delivered back into the infield by Schreiber. But taken off for second is Rossi, and he's going to be safe. He gets an A-plus for that at bat. He went the other way, and then he watched he watched the left fielder overthrow the ball, miss the cutoff man, and... Like last year, he was off to the races, and there he is with his dirty uniform. Well, that's a smart move by Noyes holding on to that ball because, you know, if he throws that, Seymour's coming around to score. Well, Zach Pesson will step in, the first baseman. 3 nothing lead, 4 post 77. He'll get some innings this year on the mound. Fouled away. A Holliston high schooler. Ashland's schedule is road game loaded for the first half of the season and home game loaded for the second half of the season. They're pretty much on the road until June 27th. They'll play one home game and then they don't have another home game until July 6th as this is hit high in the air over to right center and it is caught. Runner from third gonna try to tag. The throw in is pretty good but not in time. It's four nothing action. Now the throw to third to try to get the lead runner not in time. Lewis Rossi advances, Brad Seymour scores. A job well done by Zach Pesson. A sacrifice RBI fly out. Very aggressive base running on that fly ball. I was sort of in no man's land, go or no go. Coach Johnson decided, eh, he's up in the game. Let's go with a go. A four nothing lead, four post 77 as Sean Jouette, the catcher, steps in. <laughs> Jouette awaits the pitch. 750 average for Sean Jewett. I'm sorry, I thought we had this conversation uh, before the did, game. We did, we did. I corrected myself. <laughs> All right, perfect. <laughs> that was like you and Amber Sony. Exactly. That yeah, pitch outside. Exactly. I couldn't get that right all year at Hopkin and High. Sean Jewett had really proved his defense from last year. There's a strike, two and one. Added some pounds too. He was a big asset behind the plate last season. Outside. Ca caught every single game, I think. Especially in the playoffs there when it was 100 degree heat. He is certainly a tough player, that's for sure. The 3-1. Inside, he will take a walk to first. It's a lot of pitches for Fletcher so far in the first inning. It certainly is. Ashlyn, one more hitter after John Peston, who's coming up now from batting around. He'll see some innings on the mound, too. Peston brothers. The Holliston High School team went 10 and 11 this season. They made the playoffs, but lost in the first round. That pitch outside. Certainly a lot of talent on Holliston. I'd expect them to be around the TVL for a long time at the top. Seems like Fletcher's just falling off the mound and then yanking his pitches. Runner taking off from first as that is fouled off. Had the hit and run going on. I'd imagine some of these cars passing by on this road have gotten hit before. A lot of well, foul balls seem to go in that direction. Lincoln Sudbury's got a big budget. They can afford balls, but a lot of squirrel food over there, those foul balls. It certainly is. John Pessing hit a 267 during the high school season. He could have hit 150 with all his action behind the plate. Runners on the corners, one out. Runner taking off from first. That pitch is low. It's going to get by the catcher, but it... Ended up landing in front of him. He didn't see it for a moment, but Sean Jewett did advance to second. A two and one count. Now runners on second and third. One out. Already four runs in for post 77. I don't know about you, Tom, but I'm getting a little hungry. It's only the first inning. That's fouled away. Two and two. 
Cole, Blas Cole Glassburn of the uh, Hopkins and Hillers on that ball. Talk about him a little bit later. Ashland as a team hitting a 370 throughout their first two games on base percentage of 485. And right now it's seeming like both those numbers are going to go up with this game as that pitch is outside, full count. Even the runners, especially the runner at second base, is trying to shade his eyes. He can't see. Well, that's a good strategy by Ashland. Uh, keep batting until the sun goes down. Yep. Brilliant. And there's strike three, two away. I'll bring up Cole Glasper in the second baseman. Pro 77 has batted around. Here's Cole Glassburn. Got a good stick. Hit a home run against Millis. Big bomb, about 350 feet. Take strike one there. Had a battle it out for his infield time with Jack Whaley and Timmy Burdick. Fouled off. Oh, excuse two. me. Ben Thomas on that ball. Jake Obid from last year and Dylan O'Leary from last year coaching this year. Gets a piece of this one that is fouled off into the stands area or just behind the stands area. Nice venue here in Sudbury. At Good old Freeland. Feely Field. Yeah. Well, Glassburn hit a 105 during the high school season, but didn't get a whole lot of at-bats, only 19. Right. And he'll take strike three there. That will wrap up the top of the first, but not before. Post 77 plates four runs. It's 4 nothing as we head to the bottom of the first on HCAM and WACA-TV. Bottom of the first inning as Sudbury will come up for the first time tonight. A four-run rally by post 77 to open up this game in the top of the first. Let's take a look at the Sudbury batting order. Lucas Schwali, the third baseman, will hit first. Jacob Noyes, the catcher, hitting second. Ken Sullivan, the right fielder, batting third. Ben Cateman, the shortstop, hitting cleanup. Will Fletcher, the pitcher, hitting fifth. Henry Stahl, the center fielder, hitting sixth. Kyle Hankey, the first baseman, hitting seventh. Josh Schreiber, the left fielder, hitting eighth. And Charlie De Desmaris, the second baseman, hitting ninth. Larry, how about that Ashland post-77 defense? Well, with the exception of Cole Glassburn and Dominic Cavanaugh, it's pretty much a repeat of last year. So we'll go left to right in the outfield. Have John Pesson, Brad Seymour, and Ben Thomas. Louis Rossi at third base. Jackson Horning at shortstop. Cole Glassburn at second base, Zach Pesson at first, Sean Jewett behind the plate catching Dominic Cavanaugh. And to start off this at bat for Schwally, it is ball one. With all the pitches that Fletcher threw in the first inning, it might be a little mound issue. Dom Cavanaugh, six foot righty from Ashland High School. As this is hit high in the air, up the right side, foul territory, and out of play. Nice attempt, though, by uh, Ben Thomas, really rushing over there to get to it. He doesn't give up on anything. And that ball was slicing foul. Post 77 has high hopes for this season with a lot of returning players from last year's state tournament. Qualifying team as that pitch inside. Nice crowd on hand today, Tom. It certainly is. Great day to check out some Legion baseball as there's a strike. Two and two. When is our next game, Tom? Be at Natick on Thursday, 8 p.m. start time. At Mahan Field. That's right. The GPS will get you there. And there is strike three, one away. Nice off-speed pitch by Kavanaugh. They'll bring up Jacob Noyes, the catcher. Oh, 
first two hitters are, you wouldn't call them giants. But they obviously can play ball. They're on the team. Jacob Noyes out of Lincoln Sudbury High School. Is that pitches ball one? And Lincoln Sudbury made the playoffs this year. They did. They went pretty far. Jacob Noyes was a freshman over at Lincoln Sudbury High School. Can you believe Franklin went in the Super 8? That is unbelievable. Well, Franklin has always had a good baseball program, but now I think you can really call them an elite program. They're losing their starting pitcher, Noviello. But Hopkinton was able to bump them off and Sudbury off, I think, in the Pedroli tournament around Memorial Day. Yeah, technically, that makes Hopkinton the uh, best team in the state. Well, they didn't <laughs> <laughs> They didn't go past their first game in the playoffs, despite a bye. So I think technically they're not. Just, Just a little a, homerism there. A little homerism. I think they had a 15-3 and three record overall, but... After sort of a semi-disastrous start, they were able to smooth things out. As that pitch is outside, Jacob Noyes draws the walk, a one-out walk. That'll bring up Ken Sullivan, the right fielder. Yeah, he needs to manicure that mound or something. Seems like he's holding on to the ball too long. That's why he's spiking the ball in front of the plate. I don't think Lincoln Sudbury will be too aggressive on the bases being down four runs. Sean Jewett having a better than average arm. Wind up and the pitch. There's a strike. Kavanaugh went with a little bit of a slide step there. Get the ball to home plate a little quicker. Run on first base is get a greedy lead. From the stretch, fouled away. Heads up. Almost hit Ben Cateman who's on deck. Ken Kevin Sullivan I, out of Hudson High School. No kidding. Yep. All right. Well, that's a big lead. There's a pick over. Decent move. A little off target, but should keep the runner close. Yeah, a couple Hudson players on this Lincoln Sudbury roster. Having to get waivers, I assume. Either that or they did not make the Hudson team and tried out for Sudbury. You're very, very right on that one. Kavanaugh set to deal from the stretch. One and two count. Runner with a big lead once again off of first. Strike three, two away. Made easy work of that hitter. Ben Cateman, the shortstop, will step in. He's out of Lincoln Sudbury, set to be a senior next year. For the fans at home, these are seven inning games, right? That is right. Runner with a lead off of first. Kavanaugh from the stretch. Ball one. Runner is bothering Kavanaugh a little bit. Being extra deliberate. A four nothing lead, four post 77. Errors haunted Sudbury in the top of the first. Allowing Ben Thomas to reach after a strikeout and Dom Cavanaugh to reach on a bobble by the shortstop, checking on the runner, he slides back safe. And then Jackson Horning followed up with an RBI single. Brad Seymour singled, and then another single by Lewis Rossi to drive in a run. A sacrifice fly out by Pesson as that pitch is down low. And Sean, Sean Jewett kept the inning going, reaching on a walk. Runner's getting about a three and a half shuffle lead. Wind up and the pitch, fouled away. One and two is the count. Kavanaugh would like to close out the Sudbury top of the, their top of the inning, bottom of the first. Runner taking off from first, fouled away. He'll have to return back to first. He had that base stolen. So let's see what Kavanaugh will do. 
Cavanaugh from the stretch. Noise once again with a big lead over at first base. The umpire calling time here. Was it the hitter or the catcher? I believe it was the hitter. You know, that bat gets heavy. Just holding it straight up there. Should have a clock in your head, it's, whether it's four seconds or five seconds, as to when you're going to call time. Pitcher can stare in there all day long. That's fouled away. Count remains one and two. They have some nice netting behind home plate to save on ball costs. And also on car costs, I would imagine. Well, it's a very affluent community, Sudbury. They got good insurance companies, giant glass. Well, they're out of business now, but these glass companies will fix your glass right in your parking lot at work if you want. Runner taking off from first once again, but that's strike three. Three strikeouts in the inning for Dom Cavanaugh. And we will head to the top of the second, post 77, leading Sudbury post 191, 4 to nothing on HCAM and WACA TV. Top of the second inning, top of the order for post 77 after they went on a four run rally to start off this game. Ben Thomas will step into the batter's box for his second time today to face Will Fletcher. Ben can hit to all fields and with power. Line up in the pitch. This is hit high in the air and it is out of play. Oh and one. Ashland Club not anxious to go fetch that ball. Although Drew Rancatori from Hopkins been elected. Ben Thomas had a pretty good high school season, hitting a 359 and 70 at bats. What do you have, a couple of dingers this year? We'll have to take a look. Check swing, and he couldn't hold. The ball got away. He's going to try to go to first to throw up, and this time they got him one away. Thomas sort of hesitated. I'm not sure he heard the umpire. Call that a strike. Yeah, I don't know if he did. That'll bring up Dom Cavanaugh. That'll bring down Coach Johnson as to what the umpire did. Thomas tried to check his swing. Did go around. Dom Cavanaugh steps in. Reached on an error his last time up. Pitch up high. Nothing wrong with Fletcher's velocity, it's his control. Fouled away. One and one. Suburb players are not very anxious to getting their foul balls on their side. We don't have the book on Kavanaugh, do we? We do not. Is that pitch down low? Just know he's number 22. He pitches and bats second. <laughs> so we got so far. Tom Kavanaugh is out of Ashland High School. Three and one. He must have played with Gustafson and Hornung. That is ripped up the left side. That's going to get through for a base hit. A one-out single for Kavanaugh as he turns around first, but we'll head back, and that'll bring up Jackson Hornung. The shortstop, his teammate over for the Ashland Clockers. They've got Ronan Bates, last year's starting second baseman for most of the year, sitting on the bench. I'm sure he'll get his fair share of playing time. He was up at UMass Lowell this year. Slight lead off of first for Kavanaugh. This is hit high in the air over to right field. Could be trouble, and it will be trouble as it drops in front of the second baseman. 
I'm going to score that one a single. Oh, you're Son. very generous. I am a little generous there, maybe. <laughs> As Brad Seymour, the center fielder, will step in. What a homer you are. Well, I don't know if Demarius <laughs> didn't get a glove or anything on it, so <laughs> I think he just couldn't track it down. Oh, my goodness gracious. All right. Ashley Ann's going to get hits all year. <laughs> and Tom Cavanaugh had a good high school season. He hit a 429 for the Clockers in 79 at-bats. And that was second. Actually, that was yeah second on the team behind Jackson Hornung. So that is going to be a powerful part of the post-77 lineup this season, having those two back-to-back. -back. That pitch is outside to Brad Seymour. Nope. Mosquito got me, so I'll take advantage of your bug spray in between innings. 1 0 count. 2 on, 1 out. There's a strike. Honung homered last night, I think, in Hudson. In a rain shortened game. You are indeed correct. It was actually a no hitter as well for post 77 as Owen Ward pitched a tremendous five innings of scoreless, hitless baseball. They Was played six, but I think they had to revert back to the previous inning because of the weather, I think. So I don't know whether Webb gave up a hit in that sixth inning or not. But a no hit is a no hit is a no hit. Is. The 2 1. Up the middle, and that is nearly hit the runner. Gets by the second baseman. Here comes a runner from third. 5 nothing. post 77. Lead runner advances to third. Dom Cavanaugh comes around to score. Jackson Hornung up to third. An RBI single for Brad Seymour. He just went with that pitch. That ball kept on running away from the second baseman, and that is a legitimate hit. I'll bring up Lewis Rossi, the... Third baseman, he singled his last time up, and that scored a run. Went the other way, as he usually does. What if he's going to show bunt here? He's a real pain. He's four for nine overall on the Young Legion season. There's a strike. So Fletcher has been plagued with some miscues out in the field behind him. Runner leading off of first, trying to draw a throw over, and he will. And they picked him off. Brad Seymour called out. That was indeed close. And I think that might have been the right call. Um, I don't know. You're going to have to put that into slow motion. I'm going to disagree. I say he got his hand under. The ball beat him. The 0-1. That one is upstairs, one and one. Zach Pesson waiting on deck. And that is going to get by the catcher. Here comes another post-77 run, 6 nothing, as Jackson Hornung crosses home plate. Wild pitch allows a 6 post-77 run to score. Fletcher can work with a clean field, no runners. Work out the full windup. Two out. Two one pitch. Upstairs, three and one. No, he's not your prototypical catcher, being big and bulky. Body-wise, there's a strike. One more, one more. All you need to do is catch the ball. There's strike three. Got him looking, but post 77 does plate another two. It is six to nothing as we head to the bottom of the second on HCAM and WACA TV. Bottom of the second inning, five, six, and seven do up for Sudbury Post 191. Will Fletcher, the pitcher, and Stahl, the center fielder, and Kyle Hankey, the first baseman. 
Tom Cavanaugh out there for another inning of work for post 77. A great player this season for Ashland High School. Feely Field is located off Route 20. If you're coming from Ashland, it's going east, tucked in. Pitches down low, 1-0. Oh. Beautiful scenery down here. Certainly is. Very nice facility. Tom Cavanaugh had a 140 ERA for Ashland High School this season. He pitched 40 innings, started four games. Four wins, two losses, eight appearances. It de very decent pitching staff, Ashland High School. We saw, uh, I believe his name was Albie or Almy. He was very, very good. And they have Gustafson. Yeah, good all-around team this year. As that one's fouled away. They ended up losing in the quarterfinals round of the postseason. Who'd they lose to? I'll have to look that one up. All right, I know I asking you trick questions but going westbound on route 20 there is the this post physical location they serve adult beverages i might buy you one if you're nice to me on the way home <laughs> <laughs> two and two count that is fouled away hit a power line over there up in somebody's driveway, that'd be an easy pick. But this Ashley and Legion club looks quite a bit better than last year's club, even though there's a lot of the same players back. Just get more experience. And this is a fair ball picked up by Kavanaugh. He will run it over to first base. And you can call that a two unassisted. I think it was a one on one, ass one on assist, excuse me. Uh, Glassburn <laughs> one away. Glassburn Pesson was sort of in no man's land there, and Kavanaugh had to take control himself and beat the batter to the bag. They'll bring up Henry Stahl, the center fielder. I don't know if that got it. That must have just hit just in front of home plate and just kind of bounced up towards Kavanaugh. Beat the batter to the bag is an uh, alliteration. Is that correct, Tom? Remember your college days? That's right. <laughs> Up the left side, glove by the third baseman, throw to first, it's a beauty. Five to three for the second out. Lewis Rossi flashing the leather. He's wearing Brooks Robinson's number too. And that'll bring up Kyle Hankey. When you interview him after the game, ask him if he's wearing number five, and playing third base, put on Brooks Robinson's number. Be very, very curious. I'm sure the fans at home would be very, very curious about that as well. We'll have to we'll have to ask that question. A pitch inside. And to continue about your comment earlier, Ashland had a 160 ERA as a team this season, Ashland High School. Line up and the pitch. There's a strike. And it looked a little low. There's some moans and groans coming out of the Lincoln Sudbury. Dug out. Two outs for Sudbury, the 1-1 one, one pitch. Down low, 2-1. Tried to go with some breaking stuff. Crowd starting to fill in. And to answer your other question about before, Ashland lost to Dennis Yarmouth in the quarterfinals round, 2-1. Was that played at home or away? They were, Ashland was home. Oh, it's a long ride for Dennis Yarmouth. Well, it was a happy ride for Dennis Yarmouth. They sure. ended up advancing. Dedham ended up winning the South Division Three bracket. They're still alive in the postseason playing tonight. As there is strike three, and that will wrap up the bottom of the second. It's a 6 nothing lead for Post 77 on HCAM and WACA-TV in Ashland. Top of the third inning, Zach Pesson, the first baseman, stepping in. He had a sacrifice RBI flyout his last time up. That scored the fourth Post 77 run of the first inning. 
Will Fletcher out there for another inning of work. There's a strike one. We'll see if Ashland can put up a run here so they'll score in every inning. And that is strike two. I don't know if he meant to swing at that one. Well, that was a filthy curveball, so I think he got fooled. Let's give Fletcher some credit. He's had some good pitches. That one down low. And it wasn't really his fault, that rally in the first inning. Errors will kill you. Yep, certainly will. And so will base on balls. He struggled with his control. I believe two of the four runs in the first inning will go down as earned. As their strike three, and that'll bring up Sean Jew at the catcher. So you're taking RBIs away from the, <laughs> the Ashland side of the ledger? Come on, if you got to be consistent, you're going to give him hits? <laughs> you got to give him RBIs? Wind up in the pitch. You're telling me to give some credit to the other pitcher, so that's what I'm trying to do here. Well, when you're a homer, you got to be consistent about it. What a no count on Jewett. 2-0. Fans will be the judge at home as to whether it's a hit or an error, so we can comment all we want. It's the kids that want to see. Actually, I believe ultimately Coach Johnson will. Okay. Wind up and the pitch. That one is low, 3-0. Oh. No, he's having a little difficulty with his blocking today. A lot of pitches. Well, his pitch count must be up there by this point. Be 55 or 60 by now. Wind up and the pitch. Four straight balls. That'll put Jewett on first base with one out. John Pesson will step in. Good hustle by Jewett, but there's really no need to run that one out. He wasn't going to second base. He's playing for the crowd and playing for WACA and HCAM. Showing off his blazing speed. We'll see if he shows it off on the base paths. Big lead over there at first base. That one upstairs. Coach Johnson can pour it on if he wants. Another big lead over at first base as this is up the middle. Picked up by the second baseman. Flipped to second for one. The throw to first in time. And they'll go 4 6 3. It's going to retire the side. And that will retire the inning. Yeah, I was wondering why they were staying out there for a moment. And we will head to the bottom of the third. It's Ashland leading Sudbury 6 0 on HCAM and WACA TV. Bottom of the third inning coming up for Sudbury post 191 is 8, 9, and 1. Josh Schreiber, the left fielder. Charlie Desmaris, the second baseman. And Lucas Schwally, the third baseman. To face Tom Cavanaugh, who's having a great start so far. He struck out four. And he's given up no hits as of yet. He's walked one. As Josh Schreiber will step in, the left fielder. Ronan Bates popped out of the dugout for a second, ran after a errant, errant ball, looked like he had a limp. Could be a groin, could be a hammy. Cole Glassburn has taken over second base. Ball one. Josh Schreiber is, was a freshman at Wayland High School this year. The one and oh, down low. They've got a great pizza house on Route 20 in Wayland. It's good to know. It's in our opposite direction from where we're going. It's just trying to fill in a little bit. The two and oh count. That one down low. Certainly happy to bring you the fifth season of Ashland Legion Baseball on WACA-TV and HCAM in Hopkinton. 
Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad here in Sudbury for the call as there is a called strike three and one. Lights starting to come on here at Feely Field. Strike two. Were you going to say Fino Field? I think you were. Fino Field is where Post 59 and Milford plays. Yeah, they're off to a pretty good start. Full count pitch. And this is up the middle. There it is. First hit of the game for Sudbury. A leadoff single for Schreiber. And that'll bring up Charlie Desmaris, the second baseman. You can blame me for that one. I jinxed it. Oh, we will. Charlie Desmaris graduated Lincoln Sudbury High School this year. As the lefty steps in. Schreiber with a slight lead off of first. There's a strike. Down six runs in the bottom of the third. I don't think they'll be very aggressive on the base pass. From the stretch, strike two. Swung right through that one. Kavanaugh's been impressive with his control. I don't think his velocity is as hard as uh, Fletcher, but that runner's going. Runner taking off from first. The throw up is a good one, and not in time. It is out number one. That was strike three, and that'll bring up Lucas Schwally, the third baseman. Well, they got a base, but they recorded an out, so they'll take it. Big lead off of second for Schreiber as Kavanaugh will chase him back to the bag. I think he swallowed a mosquito there the way he stepped off the back of the rubber. That pitch outside. Calling a balk on Oof. Kavanaugh. I'm going to say balk on Kavanaugh, yeah. I'll give Schreiber a third base. I don't know whether he rocked back or he didn't come to a set, but the umpire called balk real quickly. Kavanaugh set to deal. Take a long look at the runner at third. S certainly is. I wonder if he's having some trouble out there with something. Or he's got some animus towards that runner. Swinging strike. Nice pitch there. Well, he can try and take off for home, but all that dancing down third baseline is only going to get Kavanaugh mad. The 0 1 pitch. There's strike two. Nice breaking pitch. Kavanaugh from the stretch takes a long look at third and deals. Strike three. That is his sixth strikeout of the game. And that will bring up Jacob Noyes, the catcher. A couple of back to back breaking pitches. Noise is the leadoff hitter, isn't he, Tom? Second hitter in the lineup. Uh, it was off by one. Noise doing the catching today. It's in the dirt. Blocked nicely by Jewett. From the stretch, 1-0 pitch from Kavanaugh. Leg left and the pitch, that is fouled away, one and one. Kavanaugh, I think, has a couple of strikeouts this inning, right, Tom? Two in this inning, one in the second, three in the first, six overall. Kavanaugh's very poised out on the mound. I'm going to like watching him pitch this year. 
Yeah, he, it seems like nothing can phase him. Breaking pitch, uh, hit up the middle, glove by the third baseman, throw to first, not a problem, they got him. Five to three for the third out of the bottom of the third. It is a six nothing post 77 lead as we head to the fourth inning on HCAM and WACA TV. Top of the fourth inning, coming up for post 77, nine one and two. Cole Glassburn, Ben Thomas and Dom Cavanaugh. Cole Glassburn out of Hopkinton High School. Steps into the left-handed batter's box and is set to face Will Fletcher as he swings at the first pitch and fouls it away. He and Brendan Kelly at Millis hit absolute bombs there over the fence, no cheapies there. But his at-bats were limited, playing time was limited. One and one count. But his high school coach is really high on him. He's a pretty good judge of talent. Certainly is, Coach Simos. And I think uh, Cole Glassburn could have a big role on the Hillers next year. Coach Simos likes the way he, he throws the baseball. Two and one count. Fouls that one off, two and two. That was fisted foul. The new uh, post-77 jerseys looking a little like the old school Chicago White Sox jerseys. Or maybe the uh, Expo, one of the Expos jerseys. Could have been an Expos <laughs> jersey. I was just thinking about that. A little red, white, and blue. I like it. Yeah, the numbers are a little bit faded in there. That pitch inside. As long as it's not yellow numbers. Oh. Can't stand yellow numbers. Little Pittsburgh Pirate numbers. Well, they got the black outline on those, so they're not as bad. I know, but they're still bumblebee yellow. Now it's fouled off. Count remains full. You'd prefer pink numbers, I think. But maybe a little black, a little black edging on those numbers would make them stick out a little further. Full count pitch. Inside, and that is going to be a walk for Cole Glasper. Lincoln Sudbury cannot defend that. I'll bring up Ben Thomas from Holliston High School, the right fielder. He reached on an error and struck out so far. His third at bat of the game. He's a real hustle guy. Glassburn is a threat to steal. This is hit. In the air, past the reach of the shortstop. Glassburn is going to stop at second base. And it's a single for Thomas. Two on, no outs. Dom Cavanaugh to the plate. Thomas just takes the pitch where it's pitched. That time he went to, over the shortstop. Very hard to defend. Dom Cavanaugh, one for six overall through the first two games. Would love to help his own cause here. Checking back at pitch, second, back runner back safe. Yeah, pretty good move there by Fletcher. I think he lulled Glassburn to sleep. Maybe Coach Sullivan as well. He lulled me to sleep. I was not expecting that. Takes a look at second. And now set to deal. Fouled away. You got to have that ball right on there, or a bad thing can happen. It can end up in the outfield and get a free bag. A one pitch. And this is crushed over to left center, and it is going to be caught. Good range by Stoll, and the runner at second will advance to third. So nice job by Glassburn getting the advance. Nice job by Stoll to get to that ball. I thought that was going to be a gapper. Yeah, it certainly was. Covered a lot of ground out there to get to that one. That will bring up Jackson Hornung, the shortstop. 
Runners on first and third, one out. Horning having a great day so far. He's 2 for 2 with an RBI and two runs scored. You get good speed on the bases, and Thomas is never afraid to steal. Maybe he's got the green light all, all the way, steal when he wants to. How about that? Five RBIs for Horning through the first three games. As this is up the left side, takes a hop on the grass, picked up by the third baseman, throw to first in time. And they did get the out, but another run will cross for post 77, and it's a 7 0 game. A sacrifice RBI ground out for Jackson Hornung. Sorry, Ben, we can't credit you with a stolen base. Yep, yeah, Ben Thomas did advance. Cole Glassburn comes around. Brad Seymour to the plate. Lucky seven on the board. Wind up and the pitch. There's a strike. A one pitch. Takes a look at second and deals. There's a strike. Got some good gas in that arm, but control has been his problem this evening. Mosquito. Yeah, I think it might have been. Looks like he's rubbing out his eye there. Mosquito in the eye. Well, Kevin, I got one in the mouth last inning. Yeah, they do get a, quite a few uh, mosquitoes around here. Some swamplands around us, some woods. As that is a check swing, he did hold one and two. They're non-discriminating mosquitoes down here. They'll go after anything with that's exposed. Louis Rossi on deck. One, two pitch. Inside and low, two and two. Actually, my bad on Lewis Rossi's number. He wears four, not five. My mistake. I'm going to take everything I said about him back. You were right, though. Lewis Rossi is on deck. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Wind up and the pitch. And this is up the middle. Takes a hop on the grass. Gloved by the shortstop. Throw to first in time. A 6-3 to three ground out for Brad Seymour, but post-77 does plate another run. It's 7-0 Ashland as we head to the bottom of the fourth on HCAM and WACA-TV. Bottom of the fourth inning, due up for Sudbury, 3-4 and 5, Ken Sullivan, Ben Cateman, and Will Fletcher. A 7-0 lead for post-77 as the Suns starting to Dwindle away, the lights are on here at Feely Field. Ken Sullivan has had one at bat so far and struck out. Tom Cavanaugh pitching a gem so far. He's given up only one hit, one base on balls. Wind up and the pitch. There's a strike. Nice breaking pitch by Dominic. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad, happy to bring you Ashland at Legion Baseball. On camera today, we have Cameron Thobbit and Jack Marcy. As this is up the left side, glove by the shortstop, throw to first in time, six to three for the first out. He's automatic there, over there at short. Got left-handed relief action in the Lincoln Subway bullpen. Number 17. Ben Cateman, the shortstop, will step in. <laughs> if Ashland can continue with this great pitching they've had so far, they're going to go deep. That one's inside, 1-0. One Yeah, Luke Gustafson in the first game delivered seven strong innings against Hudson. Ended up giving up four hits, two runs in that game and what was a 9-2 Ashland win. That pitch gets by. Two and oh. Then you had Owen Ward 
with a five inning no hit win. Not too shabby, Team ERA. Certainly isn't. Wind up and the pitch. Down low. Second straight leadoff hitter. He's gone 3 0 2. Set to deliver. There's a strike. Three and one. How does it get me over fastball? He deals. Strike two. Full count. Actually, Luke Gustafson pitched against Newton, and it was Owen Ward against Hudson. 8-2 to two over Newton in the first game of the season, which was last week on June 14th. And then the second game was against Hudson yesterday. That was a caught-looking strikeout for right. D.C. And that was a nice battle back from a 3-1 and one count as Will Fletcher, the pitcher, will step in. It's nice to see Ash Lane beat up on my old alma mater, Newton. Couldn't happen to a nicer ball club. If you want to go back in YouTube and watch the Newton Ashling playoff game at the States, there's a little controversy. One and zero count on Fletcher. And certainly a fun run at the States last season. Four post seventy seven. First time they've made it to that point, and they're hoping to get back there this year. They've got a deep, deep pitching staff. That's really all you need. Timely hitting. As this is up the right side, slow roller picked up by the second baseman, throw to first, no problem. Four to three he goes, one, two, three they go. It is seven nothing as we head to the top of the fifth on HCAM and WACA TV. Five, six, and seven do up for post 77. Lewis Rossi stepping in, followed by Zach Pesson and Sean Jewett. A new pitcher for Sudbury, Chad Whitney, the lefty, is out there. Strike one to Rossi. I believe it's the top of the fifth, Tom, but I stand corrected if I'm wrong. That is what I said. <laughs> <laughs> that pitch outside, one and one. Every team has to have a crafty little lefty that would just leave you shaking your head after he strikes you out. Chad Whitney out of Maynard High School, graduated this year. As this is hit in the air, over to center field and caught, one away. Now bring up Zach Pesson, the first baseman. What was ZP's uh, stats for Holliston this year? I think he was a senior this year, was he not? Dig all that information up in just a moment. I'm just thirsty for information tonight. Yeah. Opening night. It'd be nice if you could research some information yourself. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that pitch down low. Well, if you send me the information, I do the homework. Zach Pesson, a six foot righty. Graduated Holliston High School this year. That pitch down low. He about 220 pounds? 180. All right, I'm off by a little bit. Sorry. That pitch down low once again, 3 and 0. Catch you getting some black and blues back there, noise. Set to deliver. And that is going to be a walk for Zach Pesson. And that'll bring up Sean Jewett. One out, one on. Sean Jewett hit a 145 and 64 at bats this season, but very reliable catcher. Zach Pesson hit a 262 for Holliston and 47 at bats, checking at first back save. 
He must have taken a dip in the second half of the season. He was hitting about 260, 270. There's a strike. Oh, and one. One on, one out, four post 77. Whitney delivers as this is crushed in the left center. That's going to be trouble. That'll get down for a hit. Pesson around second, heading to third. He's going to be waved around third. He's going to try to score as the shortstop struggles with the ball on the lip of the grass. And the eighth post-77 run of the night is in. Bring out the oxygen can. An RBI base hit for Sean Jewett. He advances the second on the throw in. Pesson comes around to score. Which and brings Pesson up to the plate. I'll bring up John Pesson, the left fielder. Cole Glassburn on deck. Sean Jewett at second base. John Pesson hit a 267 this season. For Holliston. They were rolling along at the beginning of the year. They seemed like an unbeatable team. They were. They fell on some hard times in the second half of the year. Economy wasn't good. <laughs> Is it, oh, sorry. Oh, and one. <laughs> Every day can't be Christmas when you're playing baseball. Whitney working from the stretch. Deals that one down low, one and one. No, he's really getting a workout behind the plate. Into the bathtub he goes when he gets home. From the stretch once again. There's a strike, one and two. Just grabbed the inner corner, says the home plate umpire. Be nice if the home plate umpire could... Uh, Take his brush out of his back pocket for television purposes. That is outside, gets away from the catcher, an easy advance to third for Jewett. I'm giving that one a pass ball. Yes. It's the only position where you, you can't preach uh, Use two hands when you catch. The 2-2 two -two pitch. Upstairs, full count. Pesson is a junior, incoming junior. It's fouled away. Or a rising senior. Count remains full on John Pesson. You got one down, Sean Jewett at third base. That John Pesson will be a senior next year. That pitch outside gets away from the catcher. He will quickly chase it down as John Pesson will head over to first base on the walk, and that'll bring up Cole Glassburn. Runners on first and third now with one out still here in the top of the fifth. Already run in this inning for post 77. They are off to an eight nothing lead. Mercy rule is what Tom for the fans at home? It is 10 runs, but I believe Sudbury will get to bat in the bottom of the inning since they are the home team. 10 after five? Yes. Uh-huh. Oh, maybe Coach uh, Johnson will send Pesson. You get a lefty on the mound. Checking at first, runner back safe. Do up after Cole Glassburn is Ben Thomas, top of the order. Actually, he could get picked off over there and get into a rundown. As this is hit in the air, over to right field, and that is going to be caught. And he is going to throw it over to first base and they will double him up. A double play. What a job by Ken Sullivan over in right field chasing that one down. And then he was able to throw it back in to get John Pesson out who was already pretty much to second base. 
for the double play. It's 8-0 as we head to the bottom of the fifth on HCAM and WACA-TV. Sean Jewett ready to throw down to second base. Hornin going to take the throw. I'll have it around the infield, return it to D.C. Be ready for the bottom of the fifth. Nice throw by Jewett. Two up for Sudbury here in the bottom of the fifth, six, seven, and eight. Henry Stahl, the center fielder. Kyle Hankey, the first baseman, and Josh Schreiber, the left fielder. Tom Cavanaugh remains on the mound for post 77. And this has been a great start for Cavanaugh, who is dealing tonight. As Stahl will step in, an 8 0 lead for Ashland post 77. Just a couple innings away from improving to 3 0 on the season. Keep racking up those zeros. They'll have a microscopic ERA as a team. Fouled away. First two games for post 77, they got a 117 ERA as a team. Pretty good. Certainly dropped tonight. Turns the hitter away, one and one. There is some warm up action for post 77. Try and get a number for you. Wind up and the pitch, down low. Cavanaugh not happy with himself. He's got enough innings on in his arm from his high school season, so he should be fairly fresh. 2-1 pitch, down low, 3-1. Cavanaugh set to deal. And that'll be a walk for Stahl. He'll bring up Kyle Hankey, the first baseman. That's his only second walk of the game. Is that right, Tom? You are correct. So he's had a little trouble with his leadoff hitters the last three innings. He went three balls, three balls, and just walked this hitter. He's been able to wiggle out of any trouble he's had. Working from the stretch with a runner on first. Runner taking off as this is hit in the air. Is it catchable? No. Nice try by Sean Jewett. Certainly was. I thought he was going to have that for a minute. No, I, think, I didn't think he. You could have you jumped that fence. I would have had it. So the Lincoln Sudbury uh, runners are getting Kevin a little bit irritated. And they're down by eight runs. They cannot afford to give out a give away a free out. The 01. And this is up the right side. That's gonna drop in for a base hit. Stall, the lead runner, heading over to third base, and that's where he will stay. Runners on the corners, no outs for Sudbury. And that'll bring up Josh Schreiber, the left fielder. That was the first ball that was hit with any authority so far tonight. For Sudbury. Uh, well, you're right, for Sudbury. <laughs> But Thomas got to that ball quick and hit the cutoff man, Pess, in the first base. So Pess and Rossi are in at the corners. He deals. There's a strike. I don't understand that defensive alignment, but they should just get outs. Coach Johnson is going to come out to talk to his pitcher and his infield. He'll have some words and talk things over. Post 77 does have bullpen action in case Tom Cavanaugh continues to run into trouble. I'm sure Coach Johnson would love to see him get through this inning, but 
There is runners on the corners with no outs. Well, I think Coach Johnson is discussing what if the runner goes in first. You're going to throw through and get the out? Or what type of plays he has in his bag of tricks? Rossi in on the grass at third. The pitch is up high, one and one. No sign of a steal so far. Working from the stretch. Runners on the corners, both taking a bit of a lead. Swinging strike, one and two. A little bit irritating for a pitcher when you see out of your peripheral vision a runner dancing down the line at third. No problem if you're a lefty. Kavanaugh deals. And this is hit high in the air to the deep part of the infield and caught by the shortstop, one away. And I'll bring up Charlie does Morris, the second baseman. I want to take up a collection box for all the umpires this year. I'll give them a brush before the game. Using the shoe is just... Oh, well, I'll keep that thought to myself. Runners on the corners. One out now, and Kavanaugh working from the stretch. He deals. There's a strike. He is resilient. Backs off the back of the rubber. Certainly is, trying to battle his way back. Running on third call time to tie, tie his shoe, or his cleat. Top of the order due up next for Sudbury. Kavanaugh from the stretch. Gets the sign he likes and deals, fouled away. Straight back by us. If you're really nice to me, Tom, I might take you to that uh, fancy restaurant on the way home that Henry Wadsworth Longfellow ate at and George Washington as well. It's got a nice grist mill out front. The O2. Upstairs. Today I don't think I could buy you a muffin. Kavanaugh taking some time to adjust his glove. From the stretch, one, two count. Takes a look at first and deals inside. Nice pick by Sean Jewett. Certainly was. A lot of catchers wouldn't have been able to catch up with that ball. Not many catchers in these this zone, like Sean Jewett. The 2-2 two -two pitch. And that is up the first baseline. No call foul yet, and now we get one. A little worm burner, grabbing some chalk. Pessim was smart to kick that ball out of the way, pick it up. Didn't want to have any inter inter interference there by the runner. 2-2 pitch. That one is low in the dirt. Runner from first going to advance. Jewett will hold the throw. So Kyle Hanke advances on the wild pitch. That's what you're going to call it? Wild pitch? I am. I agree. Ashley on defense playing regular. They just want the out. From the stretch he deals, strike three. There's an out. Two away. Now bring up Lucas Schwally, the third baseman. Where'd he go to school, Tom? 
Lucas Schwally. Kavanaugh from the stretch. Lincoln Sudbury. There's a strike. Nice, nice, nice breaking pitch. Lucas Schwally graduated this year from Lincoln Sudbury High School and puts this one up the middle into right field. It goes. Sudbury's on the scoreboard. An RBI single for Schwally. Henry Stoll comes around to score. Kyle Hanke up to third. And now there's runners on the corners, two outs, and Jacob Noyes, the catcher, stepping in. There will be no base stealing here unless it's a little bit of a bobble or a bit of a wild pitch. You don't want to run into the third out when you're down by seven runs. Wind up and the pitch outside. I think Kavanaugh is showing a little bit of sign of fatigue. Yeah, this might be his last inning. Kavanaugh set to deal. There's a strike. Coach Johnson looking on carefully at Kavanaugh. He's certainly taking more time between his pitches. That's almost a certain, but not 100% guarantee of fatigue. And this is up the right side, picked up by the first baseman. He'll step on the bag, and that will do it for the bottom of the fifth. Sudbury does play to run. It's 8-1 to one post-77 as we head to the top of the six on HCAM and WACA-TV. Top of the sixth inning, top of the order due up for Ashland post 77. Ben Thomas, Tom Cavanaugh, and Jackson Hornung. And they will face the new pitcher for Sudbury post 191. Ken Sullivan moves over from right field and takes over pitching duties. And the new right fielder is Will Fletcher, who started the game on the mound. They do have that short bench. Only have four players over the nine required. So Chad Whitney, the second pitcher of the game, went one inning, giving up one run and a walk, as well as one hit. As Ben Thomas set to step in, having a pretty good day. He's reached on an error, struck out, singled, and scored a run. And we are ready for the top of the sixth. You sure about that? Set to deliver is Ken Sullivan. Ball one. No, he's acted as if that was a knuckleball. Went right through the wickets. 1-0 pitch. Ball two. Noyce has really had to work hard this game. Sullivan set to deal. That one outside, three straight balls. Noise would like every pitch to be a Broadway pitch, but unfortunately that's not the way it goes. Actually, it's a 2-1 count, says the home plate umpire. There's a strike. I think Ben Thomas has got this guy timed up. And that is fouled away. No balls, no balls. The umpire says no balls. There's some balls. Two and two count on Ben Thomas. Set to deliver. 
And he tattoos this ball over to center field. That's going to drop in. A leadoff single for Ben Thomas. That'll bring up Dom Cavanaugh. Coach Johnson want to try and put the game away? I'm sure he does. The warm-up action in the bullpen. I'm sure he'd like to avoid playing another inning if he can. Zach Pesson is over there toiling away in the bullpen. Line up in the pitch, outside. Well, maybe Coach Johnson doesn't want to run up the score. one -oh pitch. There's a strike, one and one. I don't know, Tom, what do you think? They're gonna send Kavanaugh out there for another inning? I doubt it. I think he's reached his limit. And you got a lot of games coming up, you're certainly gonna to wanna to save his arm. One one pitch to Kavanaugh. It's low. Two and one. Tom Kavanaugh having a pretty good day at the plate. Reached on an error, singled, scored two runs. Also has a stolen base to his credit. Wind up and the pitch. Up the middle, and it is gloved by the shortstop who bobbles it. And the throw to first. Not in time. Everyone's safe. An error by the shortstop, and there's two on, no outs, and that'll bring up Jackson Hornung. Third error of the game for Sudbury. Yeah, it must be some uh, gremlins out there in the shortstop area. That was not a really true hop. Tough to read. Second time today. Line up and the pitch. Inside, 1-0. It's almost like the second base side in Ashland Middle School. It's somewhat haunted. Jack Lubbock gets the play there. Jackson Horning having a really good day. Two for two at the plate, including a sacrifice RBI ground out. Two runs scored and a stolen base. Two RBIs to his credit. He can lose a pitch. He's got home run power. 2-0 count now on Horning. Wind up in the pitch from Sullivan, and this ball is hit up the left side, but foul. Just a little bit out in front of that pitch. Two and one count. Wind up in the pitch. Up the middle it goes, past the reach of the shortstop. Here comes another run for post 77. The throw is nearly cut off, but the run scores anyway. And Jackson Hornung advances to second, an RBI single. Moving up to third is Dom Cavanaugh. Well, that's uh, not what the Sudbury coach wants to see as far as fundamentals. That ball should have been cut off by the third baseman. Instead, the ball went past the cutoff man. Both runners advanced the base. So an RBI single for Hornung, advances on the throw. Kavanaugh up to third. Brad Seymour, the cleanup man, to the plate. I went outside. And upstairs. Brad Seymour is two for three on the day. Pair of singles. Stolen base and RBI to his credit, as well as a run. There's a strike. He had a nice average for Ashland High this year, I think. Certainly a pest on the base paths. 1-1 one, one pitch. Down low, two and one. Fielder's gotta get tired for Lincoln Subray. They've seen a lot of pitches. It's a little bit tiring out there for the infielders, but it's not a crisp game. And that one is going to get by the catcher. Here comes another post-77 run. Tom Cavanaugh comes around to score on the wild pitch. Up to third is Hornung. 
10 to 1, Ashland. Pass ball, a wild pitch, Tom. I'll give that one a wild pitch. All right. It's borderline, though. Does it affect the pitcher's ERA any? Brad Seymour hit a 333 this season for Ashland High School. Or excuse me, Holliston. Wind up in the pitch. Gets a piece of this one, a little chip shot. That's a fair ball. Picked up, throw over by the pitcher is Beat going it. to be not in time. Speedy little Seymour. Showing off the wheels is Brad Seymour. And that'll bring up Lewis Rossi. Jackson Hornung State put at third. You'll get a pinch hitter for Lewis. I don't know who. It doesn't look like Lewis to me. I'll get your name in just a moment. As that is fouled away. Uh, no, it hit, hit him. Hit him. <laughs> <laughs> First pitch he <laughs> saw in Legion, I guess. <laughs> wow. Pretty unbelievable. And that was Matt Tomaselli, the hitter. So Matt Tomaselli gets a pass over to first base. Got a good look at uh, the pitcher. Taking one for the team right off the bat. Here's Zach Peston. This is up the left, up the middle. Picked up by the shortstop. Bobbled. Everybody's safe. It's 11 1 post 77. Yeah, that shortstop area's got definite gremlins there. That's the third ball that's come up on Cateman. Yeah, another error by the shortstop. Bases remain loaded. No outs. Uh, you might want to change that to a hit. Sean Jewett steps in. No, I think uh, Jean Jewett might be done. Might be Brancatori. That one's outside. I believe you are right. Yeah, he's emptying out the bench now. Wind up and the pitch. Brancatori fouls that one away. Drew Brancatori, of course, out of Hopkinton High School. He's over a 300 hitter this year. Got a lot of playing time. In place of Stevie Simos behind the plate. Wind up and the pitch. Swinging strike. Still nobody out. Yeah, it doesn't appear they've uh, corrected the scoreboard yet, Larry. Yeah, yeah. Missing a run up there. Well, I gotta file a complaint. Wind up and the pitch. That's outside. That's gonna get by the catcher. Here comes another run. 12 1 post 77. If this was a close game, that pitcher would have dashed to home plate. But runner scores easily from third base. Rancatori has got uh Two base runners in scoring position. 2-2 two, two count. 11-1 the score. Top of the six. I got it at 12-1, and now it's going to be 13-1. That scoreboard is off a run. As Matt Tomaselli comes around to score. The fifth run of the inning. Another wild pitch. Zach Pesson up to third. I like the way the noise went after that pitch. He went into a... A slide with his shin pads, like he should. Yeah, well, since Sudbury is the uh, home team, I think they get the bottom of the inning. I believe you're right. Home team hits last. Swinging strike, and Rankatori goes down. That's the first out of the inning. And Good. now we're going to have another pinch hitter stepping in. This is going to be Andrew Sternick. That one's low. I don't even know whether Coach Sullivan will send a runner, even if it's the backstop. I'm not sure. Wind up and the pitch. Fouled away. One and one on Sternick. He's getting a little encouragement from the dugout. Guys that don't get as many innings as the 
starters get razzed a little bit. Fouled off into the backstop. One and two. That's a moral victory for him from his teammates. Andrew Sternick out of Ashland High School will be a senior next year. I don't think he got a lot of playing time this year, but I might be wrong. Gets a piece of this one up the middle, picked up by the shortstop. Can he make the play? Yes, he can. Another run will score, sacrifice RBI. Six to three ground out for Sternick. As Zach Pesson comes around, it is 14 to one post 77. And yep. now stepping in is going to be another pinch hitter for Ashland as they just continue to empty out the bench. It's Ben Fink stepping in for oh, Old Blastburn. Yeah. Little old Ben Fink. <laughs> He's gonna be one of the pitchers this year. Coach Johnson told me early before the ball game. Wind up in the pitch, and that hit him right in the back. Ben Fink out of Holliston High School, going to be a senior next year, takes one for the team. And his teammates are loving it. That was a nice thud, wasn't it? it certainly was. Hope the camera could pick up that sound. Ben Thomas coming up to the plate. It's the second time this inning, I think. You are right. Most of the time. Yeah. There'll be no steals here. <laughs> Don't even take a bigger lead. We'll You're going to get we'll picked give a off. We'll 50 50-50 on that. 50-50. That one inside, and that's being generous. Yeah. 1-0 well. count on Thomas, who is 2 for 4 on the day, but has scored two runs. That would be the ultimate sin if they sent that runner. I would go nuts. And that gets by the catcher and an easy advance for Fink. I forgot who's pitching for Sudbury. Ken Sullivan. Oh, right. Sorry. That one outside, 3-0. Oh. Well, it's uh, mm. been quite the rally here in the sixth inning for post-77, but what a great way to start off the season. You get an 8-2 to two win over Newton, and you're going to you get a win over Hudson, and you're going to get another one here tonight. It'll be 3-0, and all road games. I don't know whether that was a walk or a hit by pitch. That was a hit by pitch. The third one this inning, isn't it? It is. Tom Cavanaugh due to step in. <laughs> now the Sudbury coach going to have a few words for his pitcher, and he will take the ball. We'll have a pitching change here in the top of the sixth. It's a 14-1 post-77 lead on HCAM and, and WAC. And, and the TV. fans at home can... Pull down their blankets and get their pillows ready. <laughs> That's right. We'll be right back. Continuing on with the top half of the sixth inning, a new pitcher for Sudbury. Henry Stahl is coming in from center field to take over for Ken Sullivan. Stepping into the batter's box is Dom Cavanaugh. What was Sullivan's stat line? Ken Sullivan went two thirds of an inning, giving up six runs, five of or four of which were earned, because two of the hitters reached on an error by the shortstop. That pitch is high and outside on Kavanaugh. Did he strike out on anybody in that inning? He did not. Oh, he did actually. Yeah. He struck out one guy. Thought he did. Yeah. Hit three guys. Yeah, it was a tough inning. Wind up and the pitch, this is hit in the air, high in the air, over to the shallow infield and caught by the shortstop for the third out of the inning, but not before post 77 racks up some runs. Six more runs in the top of the sixth. It is 14 to one as we head to the bottom of the sixth on HCAM and WACA TV. Bottom of the sixth inning, some changes for the post 77 defense. Drew Rancatori. The new catcher. And then over at third base, we have Matt Tomaselli. And then at second base, we got Ben Fink into the game. This should be the last half inning of play as long as Sudbury does not get within 10 runs. A 14-1 lead for post 77. 
Ashland set to improve to three and oh on the season. As Ken Sullivan swings at strike one. Tom Cavanaugh aiming for the complete game here. He wants all the stats. Why he didn't not? want to come out of the game. Why not? There's strike two. Nice breaking pitch. Three, four, and five do up for Sudbury. It's got to be a little demoralizing for the Lincoln Sudbury team. Would be for any team. There's strike three, one down. I'll bring up Ben Cateman. A tough luck shortstop today. He's got to be a good athlete if he's playing shortstop. Cavanaugh waits the sign he likes. There's a strike. Post 77 scored 14 runs today on 11 hits, committed no errors. And the line for Lincoln Sudbury. Foul ball. One run on three hits, four errors. One and two count. Down to their final two outs, Lincoln Sudbury. 0-2 on the batter. Cateman, strike three. Nice feeble wave at that pitch. Having it around the horn. Lincoln Sudbury down to their last out. Larry Sacklad taking over on play-by-play. -play. Thank you very much. We have a pinch hitter here for Will Fletcher. Get you the name in just a moment. Should have it right on the tip of your tongue. Cavanaugh deals with a curveball. Gets a strike called. That is Brett Giordano out there. I don't think Cavanaugh has much adrenaline left. Ball low and inside. One and one count. That's true. O seventy seven takes on Lowell on the road tomorrow night. As that one's fouled away, one and two. And then Thursday they'll be over in Natick. We'll be there for that game. And post seventy seven keeping busy. They're also playing Friday. Really? Are we covering that game? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> like it's up right down to their final strike. The one two pitch. There it is. Strike three, one, two, three, they go. Three more strikeouts in the inning for Dom Cavanaugh. He tallied nine Ks in this game. Pretty impressive stuff as Ashland post 77 defeats Sudbury. They get the win by way of the mercy by a final score of 14 to one. Dom Cavanaugh, the winning pitcher, Will Fletcher, the losing pitcher, your offensive star of the game, is Jackson Hornung, who went three for four at the plate, scored three runs, three RBIs, also had a sacrifice RBI ground out. Jackson Hornung, your offensive star of the game and the player of the game, we're going to have to give it to the pitcher. Dom Cavanaugh, great start out there. Tonight goes the complete game, gives up one run and three hits, strikes out nine, a very impressive pitching performance for Dom Cavanaugh as Ashland post 77 improves to three wins and zero losses on the season. The final score for the final time, Ashland post 77 takes down Sudbury 14 to one for Larry Sacklad, my broadcast partner, and Cameron the Bod and Jack Marcy on camera. I'm Tom Nappy, and we thank you for watching Ashland Legion Baseball on WACA TV in Ashland and also HKM Television in Hopkinton. Enjoy the rest of your night, and we'll talk to you soon, everybody.